Hello everyone, welcome to this week's webinar. I hope you are all doing well. Please let me know in the chat if you can all hear me properly and let me know how your week has been. Say hello. Uh, I hope you are all having a great start to the week. So, Bonjour et bienvenue à ce webinaire ouvert à tous. Euh, avant de commencer, pour ceux qui ne nous connaissent pas, je m'appelle Cécilia, je suis une professeure d'anglais natif et Cercle des langues est une école d'anglais en ligne pour les, pour les adultes. Nous proposons des formations d'anglais sur mesure en fonction de vos objectifs, de votre niveau et de votre budget. Et la bonne nouvelle, c'est que nos form formations sont finançables par CPF. So now I will return to English to continue with the webinar. Hello, everyone. Thank you for saying hello in the chat. So today we are going to be talking about business attire. This is business wear, business clothes. Perhaps it's something you haven't had to think about for a long time, if you have been working from home, or maybe you have seen your company, your workplace change the way they look at business attire over the last few years. But it's something that is necessary to think about because pretty much everyone will encounter a situation where they need to think about what they're wearing what they're wearing to work. And different people have different ideas about whether what you are wearing affects your ability to do your job, whether it affects how you work, which can lead to some discussion about how important business attire is. If any of you have any ideas, let me know in the chat, do you think you are more productive when you are dressed more smartly? Do you think the way you work is affected by what you are wearing? I'll write this question in the chat and you can let me know. Do you think your work is affected? Do you think your work is affected by what you are wearing? Let me know. So today we are going to be dividing our webinar into three parts. In the first part, we're going to be looking at understanding dress codes. In the second part, we're going to be looking at navigating clothing services. And in the third part, we're quickly going to look at discussing clothing expectations. So let's get started. So to start with, we are going to be looking at understanding dress codes. So first of all, here are some different dress codes that you might encounter when you are at work. First, we have formal. Now, formal is very smart. This is when you are expected to be wearing fancy clothing. Well, thank you all for your responses. I will get back to those in just one moment. Then we have casual. Now, casual is a more relaxed clothing style. You don't need to be so smart. Then we also have two other types of casual. We have smart casual, which is a bit in between. This is not so relaxed that you're wearing jeans and trainers, but maybe you can wear a shirt and some jeans or a shirt and some trousers. And then business casual. This is very similar to smart casual. It's just more oriented towards business, so maybe a little bit more professional looking than what you might wear to a smart casual party, for instance. 
So now let's get back to what you think. So you think, Anne, you think it does affect, how do you think it affects your work? Do you feel more productive when you're more smartly dressed? Uh, Celine, you think the way colleagues see you can be affected, perhaps. So it's more about dressing for other people than it is for dressing for yourself. And Frédéric, you think it doesn't matter. And Sylvie, you think it does. So a bit of a mix, as I thought. Different people have different views on how what you're wearing affects your work and your productivity. So now we're going to have a look at a shirt. So a shirt is something that can be worn in a formal dress code, but also for a smart casual or a business casual dress code. So as you can see, we have a shirt with some parts labeled. So can you tell me in the chat if you know the names of any of these parts? Please write the, uh, the letter that you're talking about and then you can tell me the name, the name of the part. And then we will go through them later. But see if any of you know, do any of you already know the names of some of these things? I'll give you all a few minutes to write them down. Yes, Celine, which, which number is that for? Okay, for D, exactly, so that is correct. Maybe B was not so clear, Frédéric. It was supposed to be a little bit further back than that. So yes, we have a pocket and there are buttons, but it was not, uh, not B, but buttons are on a shirt. So I think it's the arrow that is confusing rather than you not knowing it exactly. It is E, uh, the buttons are E. Does anyone maybe know what A is? It's not neck, Sylvie. Yes, E is a button, D is a pocket. Do we know what A and B and C are? Those are the last ones we need to get. Does anyone know about those final three? Just give you one more moment and then we will have a look at the answers. Okay, so C is not quite a wrist. We'll have a look now at the answers. So A is a collar. Very nice, Naldi. You literally just got there, but just the spelling a little bit different. It is a collar, the part of a shirt that goes around your neck is called a collar, similar to what we call the uh, piece of material that you put around a dog's neck is also called a collar. So a collar is something that goes around your neck. Then B, we have a sleeve. So the sleeve is the part of a shirt that covers your arm. That is called a sleeve. We have the cuff. So the cuff is the part of the shirt that goes around your wrist at the end of your arm. And we also have something called cufflinks. I'm not sure if you have used these, if you have worn these, but these are little, uh, little pieces of metal that you put through the cuff of your shirt to hold them together. And you can get lots of different designs and they look very smart. For D, we have pocket. You all got that one right. And E was button. Again, you all got that one right. So a shirt is a component of a suit. An, uh, an outfit you might wear for a very formal dress code is a suit. Now, a suit is when you have matching items that all go together 
and we'll have a look now at some of the items that you might wear as part of a suit. So a shirt we just looked at, you know what a shirt is now. Then we have a skirt. So a skirt is a piece of material that covers uh, the bottom half of your body. It covers your legs and your legs are free to move. There is no, no material for each one of your legs. Then we have a tie. A tie is a long piece of material that you put around your neck and you tie it in a knot and it looks very smart. We have a jacket. A jacket is an item of clothing that covers your upper body. It's worn over your shirt. Then a blazer is a type of jacket. A blazer is the type of jacket that is most commonly worn as part of a suit. And again, it looks very smart. We also have a waistcoat. The person in the picture is wearing a waistcoat. This is a small jacket, a thin jacket that does not have any sleeves. So it does not have any material covering your arms. And a pocket square. This is very fancy, but it is a small square of material that you can put inside the pocket of your jacket. So you might see people with a dark jacket and then a light colored pocket square if they're very fashionable. We also have trousers. So these also cover your legs, but there is a piece of material for each of your legs individually. So those are the part of a suit. Now we'll just have a look at some shoes that you might wear to work. So these three types of shoes are quite smart. We have loafers, which are shoes that you just slip your foot into. They do not have laces. They don't have any, any pieces of string that you need to tie up. Then we have two other types of shoes that do have laces. This word laces, you might not know. It's uh, the word we use for the string that you tie up shoes with. And Oxfords are just flat shoes. They're flat leather shoes and they have a design on them. And then, uh, sorry, they have no design on them. And then brogues are the same type of shoe, just with a pattern, a pattern on the front of them. We also have pumps. These are just flat shoes. You can slip them on and off and they can be formal. And then high heels or just heels. These are shoes which make you taller. They have added height to them because they have a heel, a heel which is the back part of the shoe, but it is, it's higher off the ground than for a regular shoe. And finally, we have trainers. So you would only be able to wear trainers to work if you have more of a casual dress code, a casual expectation at work, but trainers are the type of shoes you wear for sport. So they are a bit more sporty. So now we are going to test your knowledge. So what do we call a sleeveless jacket? Yes, so Frédéric, trainers are basket. Perfect. Does anybody know what we call a sleeveless jacket? Can you remember? So a sleeveless, a sleeveless means it does not have sleeves. So it's not quite a blazer. Exactly, Sylvie, perfect. It is indeed a waistcoat. So Linda, yes, it is a, a jacket without sleeves. 
which is a waistcoat. Now we are going to have a look at navigating some clothing services. So by clothing services, I mean going to get your clothes cleaned, going to get your clothes changed as well, because perhaps you need uh, some, some work done to your clothes. So to start with, we're going to have a look at the dry cleaners. Now, let me know if you have to go to the dry cleaners often, if you have uh, very nice items of clothing made from fragile materials, then you might need to take them to the dry cleaners. Things like shirts, things like jackets and suits. So here is some vocabulary you might need to use at the dry cleaners. First, we have a hanger. Now, a hanger is an item, it can be made of metal or wood, and you use it to hang your clothing on. So you drape your clothing over it so that you can put it in the cupboard or so that you can hang it up. You put each arm through if it's for a jacket, uh, that is a hanger. We also have to iron. Now to iron something, an iron is a device which you heat up, you put water in it, and then you run it over your clothes and it takes out any creases. Crease is a word of vocabulary on here as well. A crease is a fold, a fold in uh, some material. So you use an iron to make your clothes flat and to make them uh, not have any creases in anymore. You press something is again to iron it, to flatten it out and make sure it stays completely flat and clean looking. You can also use starch. Uh, Celine, that is a good idea to put things on a hanger because if you put it on a hanger, it will stay vertical and it means it won't crease, it won't bunch up. So that is a very good tip. We have starch. Now starch is used to keep mainly shirts rigid. So this word rigid means hard, it means they keep their shape. If you often take shirts to the dry cleaners, you might want them to ask, uh, you might want to ask them to starch them. Often you can starch the collar, and this means that the collar will keep its shape, it will stay uh, set in place. We have a stain. Now a stain is a mark on a piece of clothing, you can, maybe you dropped something during your lunch break, maybe you spilt something, all sorts of reasons why you might have a stain, but at the dry cleaners, you'll want to tell them if you have a stain so that they can try to get it out. A dry cleaner might ask you what material your item of clothing is so that they know how to take care of it because different materials require different care. So an example of a material is something like leather, cotton, linen. These are all examples of material. They're the thing that clothing is made out of. And finally, we have a claim check. Now, if you hand in a piece of clothing at the dry cleaners, of course, you are going to probably go away. You're not going to uh, stand there while it gets cleaned. So the dry cleaners will need to uh, find a way to know what item of clothing is yours. So they will give you a claim check. And this is a little ticket which identifies uh, who you are and what items you have in the dry cleaner. So now, We'll look at a tailor. So a tailor is the person who makes clothing or makes suits. So perhaps you have just started a new job and you need a new suit. Going to the tailor will be the place you'll go to to get this new suit. 
But here are some vocabulary words you might use. So first, they might ask you for your measurements. Now your measurements are pretty much just your clothes size. So your measurement is how big you are, how small you are, so that they know how large or small to make your suit. Your tailor is rich. Interesting. Is that because they sell such brilliant, uh, such brilliant suits? So we also have width. Now width is the horizontal measurement, so the measurement across. And then length is vertical measurement. So you might find the length of your leg if you want to know how long to make your trousers, for example. Then we also have two other types of measurements. We have your chest measurement. So the chest is the upper part of the body across here. You need to know this for shirts and for jackets. And also your waist. Now your waist is the narrow part of your body above your hips. And uh, they'll ask you for your waist size for trousers. And finally, we have inches. So inches uh, is a fairly old fashioned measurement, but it's still used in the UK for uh, waist measurements and chest measurements. Uh, I, I'm not sure about the US as well, but um, it's definitely used in the UK for sizes, for clothing sizes. Finally, we'll have a look at some clothing repairs. So a repair is when you want to fix something. As I mentioned, sometimes clothes break and you might not want to throw them away you might just want to have them fixed. So first, you can have an item of clothing altered. Now, this doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. It doesn't mean that it was broken. It just means you want to change it. And we also might have a hole in an item of clothing. Now, a hole is a gap or an opening. That's not good. It means there's uh, something wrong with your item of clothing. There also might be a rip. A rip is when the material has come apart. Maybe you caught it on something and it ripped. Again, it's broken. And another part of an item of clothing that you might need to get altered is the hem. Now the hem is the border of an item of clothing. So for instance, a skirt has a hem. This is just around the edge. It will have been sewn so that it does not come apart. And darning, if you want something to be darned, this means you want a hole to be fixed uh, in a particular way. And when it comes to alterations, here are two types of alterations you might want to make. You might want to have something taken up. If you have something taken up, you make it shorter. And you might want to have something taken in. If you take something in, this means to make it smaller. Here are just a few useful expressions that you can use in all of these different uh, services, all of these different situations. First we have, please can I get this? This is a way to ask for something to happen to an item of clothing. So please can I get this, uh, this jacket dry cleaned? You would be able to say that. This is saying, I would like my jacket dry cleaned. Again, you can use the phrase, I would like to drop off my blank for and this is a way to, again, ask for uh, what you want to happen to the item of clothing. To drop something off is to leave it somewhere, to give it in. So you might like to say, uh, I would like to drop off, drop off my, uh, my skirt for altering. And often we use the ing form of the verb after for. Uh, another phrase you might like to use is how long will it be? As I mentioned earlier, 
you, uh, you often don't wait for an item of clothing to be cleaned. You just hand it in and then you come back. So if you want to find out when you need to come back, you can say, how long will it be? Similarly, if you've, if you've waited, you've come back, you need to let the people know what you want to pick up. So you might like to say, I'm here to pick up my new suit at the tailor's. This means I'm here to get the, get the suit. And then they will use your claim check to go and find it. And finally, you might want to ask if they do delivery. This is asking whether they will bring your items to you instead of you having to go to them. So now let's have a look. What do we call a mark on a piece of material? Can anyone remember? What do we call a mark on a piece of material? Let me know in the chat. If you know. Perhaps you've encountered this problem yourself. I know it has happened to me. So it's not a hem in this case, a mark. So it's not a hole either. A mark is something, maybe a, a change of color, a different color on a piece of material. Maybe it would be red if you spilt red wine or maybe it will be brown if you spill some coffee. What do we call a mark on a piece of material? So it's not a hole, it's not a rip. Does anyone know? It's on the surface of the material. So it's just something you can see. There's no hole or anything. So if no one knows, the answer is a stain, a stain. So this is a mark on a piece of material, maybe caused by coffee or caused by juice or something like that. So now, does anyone remember what expression can you use to say what you are bringing and what you want done to it? if you are maybe going to an alteration or a dry cleaner, Can anyone remember what expression you use to say what you are bringing and specifically what you want done to it? Can anyone remember? Does anyone know what the expression is that we use? I'll just give you a couple more moments. I see Anna, you're writing something, so I'll let finish. Brilliant. So it is, I would like to drop off my, and you've given a great example. So there was a bonus question, which was to make a sentence with that phrase, and you have already done it. So uh, I don't know if anyone else would like to have a go at making a sentence now that you know what the phrase is. There are no, uh, there's no one right answer. This is just a chance for you to try using this phrase in a sentence. Perhaps you've had to use a phrase like this in your life. I would like to drop my suit for ironing, brilliant. So you can say, I would like to drop off, or you can just say, I would like to drop as well. I would like to drop my suit in for ironing but maybe drop off is a bit more natural. Or you can say, drop my suit in, drop my skirt in, drop off my skirt for ironing, brilliant. So none of you are gonna have any creases in your clothing. 
you're all getting everything ironed. So my example was I would like to drop off my dress for dry cleaning. So now we're just going to look quickly at discussing clothing expectations. So different people have different feelings about what they want to wear and what they feel they should be allowed to wear to work as well. So now we're just going to have a look at a couple of words that you might use to talk about a dress code, some issues you might have. So first we have sexist. Some people find certain dress codes sexist and this means that they affect one sex or gender more than others in their rules. We also have prescriptive. Now, if something is pres prescriptive, sorry, it has a lot of rules and tries to say that there is one right way to do something. It tells you exactly what you have to do and doesn't leave you any freedom. We also have the word overly. Now, overly is used to mean too much of something. So you might find that your dress code is overly casual. This means it's too casual. Perhaps if you feel that you you work better when you are dressed more smartly, you might find a dress code to be overly casual. But if you think that it looks messy when people wear jeans or things like that, you might find a casual, um, you might, uh, yeah, you might want something that's overly formal. You'll want something more formal. And finally, we have demanding. If something is demanding, it means it asks a lot of you. It asks a lot of you. So can you use one of those adjectives in a sentence? Perhaps you have had experience of a dress code that is any of those things. Can you let me know? Can you tell me? Or maybe you just want to make up a sentence. Again, there is no right answer. It's just an opportunity to use one of those words in a sentence. Everyone have a go, just write something in the chat. It won't be right or wrong. Have you ever had an experience? I think your shoes are overly casual. Brilliant. That's a really good way to uh, a really good way to use that phrase. So this, this is saying, I think your shoes are not formal enough for work. Brilliant. That's an excellent use of that phrase. Does anyone else have any ideas? Yes. So a suit is maybe you want to say overly formal or very formal indeed. A suit is a very formal uh, item of clothing or should we say outfit, because it's many items of clothing. Well, thank you very much for your examples. We have the dress code at my old office was very prescriptive, was the example I gave. This just means that uh, at your past workplace, your dress code told you exactly what you needed to do. So that brings us to the end of the webinar for today. I hope you feel like you learned something. Please let me know in the chat if you have any questions. I'll just give you a few moments in case you have any questions. No questions, okay. Anyone else or is everyone okay? You're very welcome. No problem at all. <clears throat> it was my pleasure. It was lovely to see you. Thank you for coming. 
Euh, si ce webinaire vous a plu et que vous souhaitez approfondir votre pratique de l'anglais, euh, n'hésitez pas à faire une demande d'information sur euh, notre site Internet. Euh, nous serons heureux de vous présenter nos formations en détail et même de vous proposer un test de niveau gratuit à l'oral avec un de nos professeurs. So, please do come to see us if you would like to learn more and more. And if not, see you next time. Thank you all so much for coming. Bye-bye.